Oh, what a difference a week makes. When the twins got their lowest score ever on the block for their bathroom. Wow. It was talk to the hand. You should never have come on this show. No, ever. That's my biggest regret. Yeah. But last night, after their grand chef's kitchen wowed the judges and put them in top spot, they're not going anywhere. We're back in the game. I, f I feel sick. I thought I was going to pass out. I was the most nervous I've ever been. We got a high score from Shana. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Just a point behind, the kitchen that also nailed the brief of industrial luxury were Carl and Cara. That is a massive compliment because going into Kitchen Week... What's a massive compliment? No, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, OK, go. Yeah, thanks for just producing this thing. <laughs> we got the AT right here. In third place, were a bitterly disappointed Brad and Dale. The judges all thought the LED lighting makes it look a bit colder. The coldness and the rest of the field... I mean, put a jumper on Shana and Neil and Darren because you've got no idea. And even though Steve and Chantel came in last, they're still on cloud nine. We didn't win, but the feedback to me was really positive and they did like it. Yeah, I'm really chuffed. I've never been so happy to win. I don't think I've been chuffed since I was a you know, middle-aged gentleman. <laughs> now that's what I call a glass half full attitude, Chantel. And you're gonna need it for this week's monster task. You will be finishing your entire first floor yeah. of your apartment. That's right, lounge and dining and everything from the front door all the way through to the back. On their way back from judging at my HQ, the twins share their great news with Bill Deshaw. We won it, Ryan! Woo! Yeah. Nine and a half. You! You let up your day! Nine and a half from every judge. Nine and a half from every judge? Yep. That is sick. I know. You little beauty! It is so funny watching the girls. Oh, attitudes, isn't it? Like, yeah. one week we're designers, the next week we're designers and you're all wrong. And then, yeah, yeah, they're back on board. Yeah. They said we're back in the game. Oh, yeah. Hell yes. Well, last week it was that bad. The charging was that rigged and Shane had that personal vendetta. It was that bad, yeah, I yeah, walk yeah. out. Yeah, you'd never listen to a judge ever yeah. again. And, and now they're... There and yeah. take it the following That's week. Right. So that means you're all right with the judges' scores then, eh, boys? Yeah, I don't even care if I don't like the kitchen at all. Like, I couldn't give two rats if they hated it and said those comments. But the fact that those guys are the ones that are responsible for you getting money to continue your reno... Yeah. ...is the bit... Yeah. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, but anyway, who gives a f to do that? Oh well, your all white colour scheme and LED lighting might have left the judges feeling a bit cold. There is something wrong with the, the feel of the kitchen. The whiteness and the styling just feels to me not quite right. Mm. It's feeling quite clinical. But your fellow blockheads might think differently. I really like this room. So do I. I love it. Wow, look at this. Mm. Oh, the LED. It's a bit much. Yeah, I don't like that. No. It's it feels a bit disco-y with all this. Whoa, mama. This Whoa, cool. mama. Whoa, mama. That might be a bit over the top for my liking. I like it. It feels like I'm going to jump in the Tron bike. I remember Tron. Everyone loved yeah. Tron. Wow. That's... Far out. That's cool, isn't it? That is amazing. Man, it's cool. 
Man, this kitchen's incredible. The boys curve bench through the judges for a loop. I would actually feel that as a wine rack. <laughs> 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 I would yeah. actually feel that, and then it won't feel so spaceship. See what they mean by putting a shelf? That would probably be better. It's pretty cool, though. Look at that. Is that like an esky? Yeah. It's like a fridge for drinks. Oh, I got esky envy. And even though Neil felt 20 years younger, it wasn't in a good way. Guys, do I look younger in here? <laughs> yeah! Because I feel like we've gone back in time. This is feeling really dated to me. But everything makes me feel like I am back in the 1990s. This is a nice bar or a nightclub, but not, uh, yeah, too much for a kitchen. And not a family kitchen, I don't think. I think they were a fair bit underscored. This kitchen's beautiful. I think they've done a really good job. They've surprised me. I oh, know, the pools are kicking ass. They are. I like it. I think I've got a headache from those lights. With its soaring ceilings and timeless styling, Elisa and Lissandra won the judges over from the moment they stepped in the room. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> it's massive. Incredible sense of space, isn't that? Incredible. How vast is this? The girls are back. They are back. The girls are back. And Shana was also impressed with its practical features. Stove, sink, fridge, everything is in that beautiful triangle. Everything's completely functional within arm's reach. This isn't a cook's kitchen, this is a chef's kitchen. Yeah. Nice appliances, yeah, these like are the nice. I like this, this colour looks good. Oh, that's on. Is it? It's hot. Yeah. That's boiling hot. Um, Coffee yeah. machine in here, mate. Oh, yeah. Look at the mirror. That is so clever. Like, mirror wouldn't work for us because it doesn't reflect space. It has reflects cabinetry. This is really smart. Man. That mirror opens everything up, doesn't it? Yeah, I haven't seen that. That's really good. Good splashback. Yeah. Makes it feel really spacious. Neil returned from the 90s to modern times. It also feels contemporary, but it doesn't feel trendy. It won't date. It's kind of modern, but it's, it's also timeless. This is going to wear really well. This is going to look just as good, I think, in five years' time, maybe ten years' time, as it does today. The only thing I do worry about is when you're going up and down the stairs, you'll be able to see on the top of this cupboard who cleans up there. Yeah. It's going to be so dirty and dusty along there, and you're going to be able to see it from the steps. Yeah. Dusting dilemmas aside, everyone agrees the girls' kitchen is a standout. This is seriously wow. How could they not get a perfect score for this? It's heaps different, isn't it? Seeing the layout completely yeah. different to our own. It's cool. Very cool. Obviously very good. Well done, girls. Yeah. Deserving. I think they deserve a win. This definitely time. deserving of a win. Good job, girls. Good job. Their clever use of texture and sleek design, Carl and Cara lost by just one point to the girls. It's got a sort of raw edge to it, it's got that industrial edge to it, but at the same time it feels glamorous, which I guess is absolutely spot on. I think what these guys really know is texture. Mm. That's what we're getting. We've got the raw timber, then we've got the veneer timber, yep. we've got brick, we've got the stone, this gorgeous yep. texture going on that gives it life. Wow, this is nice. Yeah, it wow. is. Wow. Oh, look at the detail. Hmm. Mm. Nice. It's very nice. Ooh, nice. Ooh, la da I like that splashback. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, that is good. It's really good with the glass yeah. over it, isn't it? I love that splashback. Splashback looks amazing. Let's have a look at this. Oh, uh, that was Neil's favourite piece. Yes. Yeah. That's what I call a pantry. They're good. Look at them. <laughs> You're impressive, then. I really like those because I like aprons and like that. Yeah. That's awesome. There's quite a bit of space in there. That's awesome. It's quite a bit of space in there. It's not quite the guest bedroom I'm used to. And it's also got cake. Oh, wow. Food. Thanks. She won me over. Yeah, this kitchen should have won. Yep. Yep. Oh, look at that. There's more food. Oh, 
I actually do that. Overall, great job. Mmm, even better food. I love corn. I always eat this stuff and get out of here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. That was good kitchen. Even though they came in last place for their kitchen, the judges were captivated by Steve and Chantel's retro feel. To me, this feels like a sort of modern reworking of the more country style kitchen. Has that a we retro. Know people love. Has a retro feel. Yeah, it has to a it. retro feel to it, but at the same time, they've cleverly kept it quite modern. I don't like it. It's uh, definitely there. It's it's definitely Chantel's style, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I don't know that it's everyone's style. It's kind of hippie, but modern hippie. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh that. that's good. Look at that. A building conda. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Drawers in strange places didn't work for Shana. I don't know why you would have your cutlery drawer over here. They haven't thought mm. about that. Cutlery, cutlery, where your dishwasher yeah. is, why are you going to do that? Sure. Right under the oven. That is a little bit random. That's weird, isn't it? It is weird. Because if you're getting this out of here, give them a little wipe over, you've got to walk all the way to there. Yeah. That is a bit random. But it was two innocent goldfish that had the judges at odds. It's from a styling point of view, Goldfish? The, the aquarium. I just, I'm not all that taken. Do you know what? I'm seeing more and more goldfish in kitchens. I'm not kidding. Mm, I can't mm. tell you how many kitchens come across my desk at the magazine with goldfish in them. Sure. How's this? Goldfish? Yeah. Have a look at them. That's so Chantel. I like the fish. I like the fish. <laughs> See, I don't mind that. No, they're cool. I don't... That's a good little idea, like a little feature thing. Kids yeah. would love it. Yeah. Feed the f get, sit down and have your breakfast. Can't feed the fish until you finish your breakfast. Yeah, cheaper than a tally. Mm. I can't picture how the next bit's going. Nah, that's what I was just about. I worry about how they're going to do the rest. I worry about how this is going to work layout-wise. Mm. Well, boys, with everyone starting their living and dining areas tomorrow, you're all in the same boat. I don't think we could be happier with what the judges said today. Yeah, we need the money, but I think it's more important. They saw our vision for the first time. You know, the, the goldfish was a, a debate. Neil Whitaker loved it. Darren didn't like it so much. Well, you know what? The person who's going to buy the house, they don't have to buy goldfish. So that's cool. I'm down with that. In the morning, I want to spend some time cleaning this room and just working out budgets and how much we spent last week. And, and just paying some trades, okay? But I'll be on hand to like answer questions. Thanks, <laughs> CEO of Cambridge <laughs> <Game> Renovations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pleased you've made yourself available. <laughs> you get this? You serious? <laughs> what I mean is. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Coming up, the block's biggest room delivery ever gets underway. To complete the whole of level one, that's a mammoth task. So how are we gonna do finish our floor? It's just really frustrating. You've just gotta calm down. There's no point in being like this. I'm it doesn't not. get you. Lisa, you don't realise what you like sometimes. Sandra. Just breathe and it's fine. If only it was that simple. If the plans change once, the plans they can... haven't changed. The location where you're going up through the rooftop slab oh, hasn't changed. Tell me less today, Keith. Have fun. Knock yourself out. Bringing to life four luxury apartments from an empty shell has been hell at times for our blockheads. I'm at cracking point. <laughs> and on the sixth week, there's still no rest. The workload just keeps getting bigger. 
By week's end, their living and dining room areas must be finished. And not only that, the entire bottom floor, including the stairwell void, all the way up to the rooftop terrace. Oh, man. To complete the whole of level one, that's a mammoth task. There's so much to do. It's going to be a very costly week, and um, we need to do it right. By integrating their completed kitchen areas, this is the week their vision for the ground level, front door to back, comes together. They start out so happy, so eager to please. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> but as the weeks wear on, it ain't hard to read the signs. Our blockheads start to change. I wake up every day is a daydream. Oh, yeah, I see you either. I'm always up. I'm just sort of always in bed with a stupid cruise going. What are you doing? I'm not sure yet. I'll see how I feel when turn the lights back off. Yeah, sleep. <laughs> Cassandra is on the warpath looking for her builder, Sean. Do you have his number, do? Don't, don't worry. That's OK. If he's, he'll turn up when he turns up. That's well, right. we need to know whether the people are going to be here or not. Either. And Brad is still bitter. Unbelievable. Over last night's crushing defeat. They said they didn't really get the curved bench and thought that maybe we could stack some wine or something in there to utilise the space. Well, you can sit around and complain or get cracking planning your layout like Chantel. My idea is basically there'll be a dining table here, a square one, and then. This will be all open, it's not going to be boxed in. Then on this side, it's a wine rack for the dining. The first few weeks it was, uh, I think, just, uh, I suppose, lack of experience. They're getting better at it now. Instead of being like a high partition. Chantel's plans include a dividing wall. So the wall goes up the whole way, or it's only like a, a nib wall? I reckon a nib wall. A fireplace. So we've got a fireplace here, but it's not on the ground and a see-through glass panel looking up into the main bedroom. There's no privacy concern, because all you'll do here is maybe sit here occasionally and you'll be able to see out, which is a real novelty for kids. So yeah. I'm like, hey! Yeah. Just what any parent would want in their bedroom, Chantel. A peephole. Everything is sounding pretty pricey. Better get stuck into your job for the day, Steve. The budget. This budget is uh, so much fun. I'm trying to just clear the slate so we know exactly how much we've got to play with. I'm hoping we don't have any surprises, but if they do turn up, um, I won't we'll be surprised. Over in apartment two, Kyle and Cara are planning on building a wraparound timber feature wall and tiling their entire bottom floor. First, the floor has to be screeded, but there's a roadblock. Keith's boys are coming to put up a scaffold tower in everybody's entranceways. The scaffold is going to go straight up that chute today. So we're going to come in and plaster it all for you, and you guys are going to be painting it this week. Yeah, That's why the scaffold's going up. We won't have time to screed and tile. and The screed needs 24 hours to dry. The tiles need to dry for 24 hours. Yeah. Then they have to grout them. Like, if we could do that at the start of the week, and let these guys do everyone else's. No. If you had. Our plan today was to obviously start framing, but get our tiler in this afternoon to finish our screed. And Keith just said there's going to be a scaffold there all week until Friday, which has really stuffed our plan up. How are we going to do finish our floor? Well, you'll have to finish it after Friday. Meanwhile, Brad and Dale are also feeling stuck. We were sort of hoping for a win this week, budget-wise especially, so it just gives you that bit of room to play with a couple of cool ideas each week, maybe, you know. But... We haven't really got too many plans in place or thoughts in place for it at the moment because we know we haven't got the budget, so there's no point dreaming about it. But one thing they are making a reality is a fireplace. If we have the fireplace freestanding here, 240 off the wall to the back of it, it's going to stick out to, like, here somewhere, so it'll be like... You know, that sort of big. Is it going to look weird? So maybe we should have changed the fireplace and gone and built in system.
Inside apartment three, Lisa and Lysandra are feeling the pressure. This is the week their big idea, the one they've been waiting to reveal since week one, needs to pay off. The boys! The boys. We've obviously got a really big space to work with this week, and it is a bit of a double-edged sword, you know? It costs a lot of money to finish an area like that. And we'll probably be spending a lot more on this area than anybody else. If we can follow the curve of that, we'll have to batten the wall out. Why? Trying to come up with a lighting plan and a heating plan and... We can go electric, we can go gas, we can go any type of heating we want. It's just a matter of what's in the budget. And at the moment, it looks like it'll be a candle. Speaking of fireplaces, Keith has some very specific rules. The teams can place them anywhere they want, as long as the flue comes out exactly where the architect has planned on the rooftop terrace. Did someone say fireplace? Steve, our resident chimney sweep, ditches the budget, keen as mustard to discuss what he loves. So that slab up the very top, you've got to come in 450 from the edge, and that's yep. got to hit the outside edge of your flue. Right. Now, we can't go any, any closer towards the front. Yeah. Because it'll affect our setback. It won't get certificate of occupancy. Yeah. That's fine. What are you doing? You're doing a, a wood fire, gas, gas fire. Gas fire. Yeah. So you can't go in there and be a chimney sweep, mate. <laughs> hey? No, I don't sweep gas. I thought you would have put a, a wood fire in, being a chimney sweep. I want to. I want to. I just don't think it's right for the area. Like, I think it's too much for, like, the price of wood. Yeah. And getting wood in this area is too expensive. In Geelong, I'd hook them up myself. Get him some wood. Time for everyone to start clearing the decks so the floors can go down. But Brad and Dale have a 500 kilo cement grinder they need to move. How sold with a grinder? There's only one way out through the Angry Bear's lair. We're going to have to get um, just laying for a half an hour to knock these two out so we can get this grinder into your terrace just to lift it up and out. There's no other exit point. It's not going to be in a, in a place that you're going to be using. You're going to they've already passed it here. Oh, have they? Yeah. No, that's only just screwed on. That's all right. That's fine. Why can't you get it out oh, your way? Because we can't lift it from anywhere. Do you know how precious that space is, though? Right that's what there. I'm saying. Yeah. Everyone wants this space. Everyone. You've got the plasterers, you've got the scaffolds, you've got Brudian in with the doors. There's a million people working over each other. We don't have any room. You've just got to calm down. There's no point in being like this. I'm not. Okay. Alisa, you don't realise what you like sometimes. Sandra, just breathe and it's, it's fine. fine. As the skies crack open above 49 O'Grady Street, our blockheads hunker down. This week, the teams have to complete more square metres of space than they've ever had to do in the history of the block. Their dining room, their living room and stairwell. In fact, their whole bottom floor. It's definitely the biggest way we're going to have on the block, I think, so far. It's easy because you think, oh, it's just dining and living, no, you know, no plumbing or... But we have to batten out our floors, then we have to batten out the ceilings, finish this whole stairway entrance off as well. So... <sighs> it's a massive week. With so much to do, it's not going to be cheap. So figuring out their budget is key. The twins' big task to make the boy finally become worth the gamble. We suffered in the past because of the spaces that we had. Now's our time to make the most of the space we have. Just on trades alone, I reckon we're going to be up to maybe 18 or 19 grand. Steve should take a leaf out of Lysandra's very neat accounts book and do his budget too. But nope, he's thinking of something else. What about if Batman and Robin oh. coming down a hole next to <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Old school Batman and Robin. That would be really cool. Each apartment has a stairwell where a spiral staircase will go, and they can decorate it however they like. We're thinking behind the spiral staircase, the whole way up. It's about six metres um, to the top of the second floor to have a black and white image. It's very Melbourne, this um, apartment. I think that's what we're going for. Movies. I think movies, like black and white movies, cliche. You know, like Marilyn Monroe images. Elvis images. Very $2 shop. I don't want that. 
Oh, Batman, Batman and Robin. Sliding down a pole next to the... <laughs> <laughs> next to the stairwell. You're a trouble maker. You're a trouble maker. Mm. At last, Elisa and Lysandra's superhero has come to the rescue. I got in a bit of trouble this morning. I was a little bit late. Next week, you have to make up for them. Come at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I was here until maybe 10.30, quarter to 11 on Saturday night. And then, because Lysandra was over in uh, Adelaide seeing her kids, uh, I came in Sunday morning at 7. And I was here till about 10.30. Um, is that because you're not working hard enough? Absolutely. Here it comes. You're not here it comes. And then she was on my case this morning when I sent her a text message to say I'm going to be late. She's like, um, no, you're not. You're going to be here. And I'm like, ah, yes, I am. Their first issue with the void is how to hide all the electrical wiring and pipes in the ceiling. I'd prefer not to drop this one as low. Yeah. Where's the tape? We don't up. have to drop it. We can just do bulkheads. Do you think it's going to look... Do you think it's going to look odd if it steps? Yeah, that's my that's my concern. It'll look odd if it steps up. That's and down. my concern. But what point are we dropping the ceiling here? It really has to be, you know, here we'll have to drop the ceiling. Oh, the bulkheads are so confusing in this apartment because we have the plumbing and the the air conditioning vents and all that. We can bring that height of that ceiling across. We can push that duct hard into that corner. Wherever this void starts, this bulkhead's going to have to come through. Ashley, it needs to come out a little bit if we can. Let's scrap the void and let's just, let's let's just, just cover it. In. Let's just cover it. Yeah. I think floorboards, so much easier. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carl and Cara have just noticed something tricky above their heads too. An air conditioning duct in the wrong place. See, they originally told me this was going to be set over that um, ceiling there. I know. It's freaking stuffed us. Who do we have to... Can we ask about getting it moved, or is it too late? No, it's too late. Like, that's that's all screwed in there. That's... That, that's all that's got, to the top. That's all got to do with the ducting well. that's feeding the bedrooms and everything upstairs. The aircon guys have put a duct right in the middle of our hallway, which is really going to affect how the apartment feels as you walk in. That would be fine if it was over here. But the main thing is that the top of that box has got the big 12-inch duct that's flowing through our wardrobe upstairs. Originally, when we did our plans, that air duct was supposed to run in the hallway cupboard that runs along the hallway cupboard, so it'd be hidden. It's just so annoying. Why would it go there? The joys of the block and what you've got to work around. It's all good. All right. Her vision for the area now ruined, Kara suddenly has a pounding headache. It's not the week that's giving me a headache, it's that bloody air conduct. It's just really frustrating. Over in apartment one, Steve is searching for something in his room. Could it be his laptop so he can finally do his budget? Nope. They're not in here. There's something more pressing to attend to. Returning Goldilocks and Fanta, the goldfish that added that graceful touch to their kitchen reveal. Because we don't want sawdust and all sorts of construction stuff going in their water. And on the way, Steve's going to note out the budget so we can see how much we can spend up this week. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to do it, but I don't know where we're at. Yeah, no, it'll be fine. We'll get that done today, hopefully. Yep, there's no better time to balance the books than while you're driving. Look at him, look, look, look. Look, he's totally looking. Look at them. <laughs> how cool is that? Just this one little gap. He's like, oh, hey, dudes, I don't want to go. Meanwhile, Brad and Dale have gone to get the centrepiece for their living area, a wood-burning fireplace. There are limitations as to what we've been allowed to um, get installed back at the block, so anything that was uh, open fire was ruled out. So luckily, Simon's still got a great range here that has the fires with doors on them to conceal it. A fireplace will help warm up their polished concrete floors. 
So it's a freestanding unit, um, enclosed, very efficient. Yep. Slow combustion burner. And a huge big viewing window, which is good. The fireplace we've chosen has an exposed flue that goes up, and uh, obviously there's another level upstairs, so it'll have to continue through that level and out. The advantage, I suppose, we've got of that is if we want to leave that flue exposed on the second level, that'll create heat upstairs as well. The best part about having a fire like that is you could, you know, we can have all sorts of parties and toast marshmallows, keep the door open, make one of those little forks, and you cook some toast on there. That always tastes great. So, yeah, the possibilities are endless. So now the boys have their fireplace, and Goldilocks and Fanta are now safely back at the pet shop. That was so weird. Mm -hmm. They say that the fish have a three-second memory. Even the guy in there went, wow. You put Fanta back in, like with probably 100 fish. Mm -hmm. Put it back in, swam right up, and just went in my face and he goes, I go, oh my gosh. So you just swam through 100 fish to get to my face. Straight over. Straight over. How weird is that? You know how we say you've got a bit of a cartoon in your face. <laughs> Imagine how big that is in the water. Like, Whoa! <laughs> That is weird though, isn't it? Yeah. Destination unknown. It's day one of living and dining room week, creating the ultimate space for people to eat, drink, relax and be merry in. But right now, our blockheads aren't exactly chilling out. Ever since Cara found an air conditioning duct sticking out like a sore thumb in her hallway, she's had a throbbing headache. I'll see you soon. See ya. So she's going to get away from it all. I've got a really bad headache. All I feel like doing is lying down, but we've got not much time this week to find a lot of stuff. And it's so noisy back at the block. This is the end. So I'm not having a good day. It's pretty hectic here at the moment. There's noise going on everywhere, hammer drills, doors. I think she's got a really bad headache too, so hopefully she can get away on a bit of peace somewhere. I'm so tired. And what better sanctuary than a furniture shop where she can meditate on what couch to get. This is much quieter and calmer than the block. It's nice to come here. Block has definitely been doing my head in today. Trying to ease her pain, Kyle and his trades start framing in the offending unit, so she'll never have to look at it again. I think once we build it and once it's all in and she sees that it's not going to be too much of an impact, um, I think she'll be all right with it. So, time. so comfy. This sort of couch is good for a headache. <laughs> Stephen Chantel's, while builder Luke is hard at work laying down yellow tongue. They're out looking for a couch too. Oh, limbering up, eh? Yeah. I reckon I would like to have a look at that one. And looks like this one might actually fit. No, no, that's as far as oh. three meter. That <laughs> <laughs> three there. All right, let go. Is that Give me like an interpretive dance of what the name of this couch is. Would you like some theme music? Feel the night fever, night fever. You know how to do it. <laughs> that was atrocious. My singing, on the other hand, was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, I could have done those ones as well. Their Studio 54 dance party only comes to a halt when a certain foreman has an urgent reminder. Hola, Keith. Steve. What's going on? I need you guys to, um, to purchase your front door locks, door seals, turn snips, etc. I've got a list of components with letters and numbers, etc. that have to be basically ordered. As per piece of paper. Um, when are you guys back? Um, we'll be back in probably an hour and a half, two, two o'clock, something like that. 
We need this stuff here tomorrow. It has to be here tomorrow. Where are you guys? We're at Dare Gallery. Both of you? Yeah, we're selecting the most important aspects of this place. We're getting it right. And you know what, Keith? Sometimes two people will need to be involved in making decisions. You know what I'm saying? Right. Did you feel that preemptive strike against Keith giving me for being away from the block? <sighs> Knobs, locks and knockers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need the we need the knockers are the most important aspect of any door. I probably prefer the knobs than the knockers. I've met a few knobs men as well. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. At least someone taking Keith's request seriously is Dale. But that doesn't mean he's happy about it. If they've got a mob that's installing front door or some big special security front door, surely these door parts would come with that door or be supplied by the fit-out crew that are doing it. So um, it's just odd that they make us run around getting door hardware for something that we're not organising. Also getting all their ducks in a row is Elisa and Lissandra. There's so many little things that we need to organise before anything can really be done. You just really want to get stuck into the first day, don't you? And it, it can be quite like, you, but be like, what? <laughs> That's how I feel today. I actually feel like my head's about to explode. Can you feel that? Don't you know I'm loco? You can't get sick now, girls. You've got back-to-back -back meetings all day. First, the cabinet makers. We just want something really simple, but just with a little bit of a different feature. Next, a curtain consultation. What's this, then? This is a little bit different, isn't it? The same yeah. type of linen feel. Yep, it is. Just a bit more sheer, isn't it? And finally, a one-on-one -on -one about lighting. This is going to light the wall. You're going to have lots of natural light through here. You've been really clever about that with the board. Light fittings are definitely one of the hardest things. It needs to be formal. It needs to feel special. Obviously, it's going to be lit, so it'll look a lot nicer. It will. I'm just worried it's going to disappear. Do you think? I don't know. With everyone having to finish their entire bottom floors by the end of the week, attention to the finer details is a must. At least Dale has ticked off one of his. 370 odd bucks worth of um, door hardware there for our mate Keithy, so that comes out of our budget which is a bit of a pain in the bum. The good thing is maybe they'll put locks on them as well tomorrow with the locksmith come out and fit them out when the doors get hung and then we can lock out the camera crew and the wake-up crew for the morning. That'd be nice. And lock out, more importantly, be able to lock out the judges so they can't come in and make ridiculous comments. Getting their entire bottom floor finished by the end of the week, our blockheads have heaps to get done, both big and small. Elisa and Lissandra have hit the shops, Brad and Dale helping their trades, and Chantel's answering Keith's urgent call for knobs and knockers. And what is it you're supposed to be doing, Stevie? Today's the day to try and get our budget in order. And I've got it all on a spreadsheet. Just have to fix our um, internet connection. I have no doubt that Steve's freaking out about not having done the budget, so it's not helping him that I'm nagging him. But I have been asking to do it, like me do it even. We're in our sixth week. Hang on, did I hear that right? Six weeks ago, I gave everyone a stack of cash to spend on their reno. A hundred thousand bucks cash. Without a budget, all your plans could come crashing down, Stu. So why are you flying blind? I get pulled from pillar to post to do all these different jobs, and the budget is the one thing that you need to take time and, and actually look at it and be considerate of what you're doing. Chantel wants to shop and get things for the 
the whole downstairs area and she doesn't know how much she's got to play with. I'm uh, just up against it at the moment, trying to make sure everyone's happy. It's, um, uh, such is life. Yes, there's way more pressing issues to attend to. No prizes for guessing. Have the heater here and run the flu straight up and then tuck it behind the doorway in there. Can't. The, um, oh, um, and then tuck bring it back on over. This doorway and then tuck, yeah, run it back over. Because it, it's got to go. F I, I thought he was saying that it was minimum 450 off there. Minimum 450 off there, and then, but whatever that way. Like, no, then, apparently not. No? Nah? No, nah, apparently it's got to be there. It's got to be 450 from that exterior wall. I don't know why. That's an aesthetic, and that's not a guideline. You can't say our resident chimney sweep doesn't love his work. But if Steve keeps talking about the flu, he's going to catch a very bad cold. Over at Carl and Cara's, six extra trades have been brought in to turn two tonnes of sand into screen. Keith hasn't budged on moving the scaffold. They'll just screen around it. Yeah, and then they'll we'll pull the scaffold up later. And, yeah. It's not ideal. But what is ideal in this crazy situation? Cara's back on site from her mental break, only to find her bedroom blocked. What do we do tonight? <laughs> That's what I was blowing up at Eamon, because he's... <laughs> he shut us out of We're going to sleep with Stephen Chantel. <laughs> no, we're not. We're going to sleep upstairs. We'll come sleep at your place, Eamon. Is that sweet? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. How are you feeling anyway? Not very good. Have you still got a headache? Yes, I need to have a lie down, I think. If I just lie down for half an hour, I might just go away. Don't lie down in that room because you won't be allowed to get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least that pesky vent has vanished. What do you think about the bulkhead car? Looks fine, I like how you stepped it up there. Good to see Cara with a smile on her face again. Not looking so happy is Chantel, who's been sent on a wild goose chase. So, went to the locksmith, and Lysandra's already been there and cleaned him out of what we need. And he said, oh, do you have a piece of paper that has everything that you need on it? I'm like, nope. So all the other block couples did. OK, so I rang Steve. Did you get given a piece of paper that says everything I need about the locks and not giving it to me. And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, I messed up there. Which is a bit annoying. Well, at least some of our blockheads achieved something today. Downstairs has just been screened, so there's a fresh screen down there and we can't actually get access into our bedroom that we usually sleep in. So we're just hanging out, just kicking it. Just like we're, we're hanging in the luxury room for the night. Just hanging into the luxury room for the night. I think Dale and I's relationship is slowly, you know, evolving, moving in the right direction. Tonight we went and did our first dual grocery shop together. How cute she is, you cutie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carried our little baskets around and got some groceries together. So that was good. That was good. We're becoming quite the couple now. Anyway, time to go to sleep. Coming up. If the plans change once, the plans haven't changed. The location where you're going up through the rooftop slab oh, hasn't changed. Tell me less today, Keith. Have fun. Knock yourself out. After a tough start to living dining room week, day two dawns. And with the sun shining and birds singing, everyone wakes with, dare I say it, a very positive attitude. Well, I had an awesome sleep. This bed's so comfortable. Looks like it's pretty sunny outside. Yep, you can see the city. That's just so nice. <laughs> it's so good. That was the best night's sleep. Sean gets here before you do. That was the best. Oh, jeez. Oh, here we go. I just said it. 
Six thirty. What did I say? What? Did you hear what I said? No. I said, Elise, if you don't get up and Sean gets here before you do, and you whipped his butt yesterday, I will be up by. I will be ready by seven. You told me to be here by six thirty, yes. and I'm here. Absolutely. So get your jump ass on up. it. Jump on it. I make a point of being up and at it. Although I'm awake, my face probably isn't. I have a habit of my face sleeping in for about six hours. One of the most testing parts about living on site is that for six weeks, everyone has had to share the very basic communal bathroom area. Oh, no, I like the open plan living. Yeah, we don't. You stink. And it hasn't always been pretty. Oh. <laughs> I, no, I just kind of, <laughs> kind of realised I don't actually know what this is. Even though they've built two luxury bathrooms each in their apartments, they've been all show and no go because the plumbing wasn't connected until now. I did in my own toilet this morning. That was good. <laughs> that was the first one I've done in there. This morning, the pipes were all connected and everyone is greatly relieved. That was exciting, doing a little poo-poo in my own toilet. Even Cara, who was so sick yesterday, is a new woman. Yeah, I'm feeling much better today. I had a headache all day yesterday, and that's finally gone, so I'm ready to get productive. Kyle and Cara's big task is to get one of their main features underway, timber cladding that will stretch all along their hallway and two storeys up their front stairwell. So, Cara, where do you reckon we should stop the cladding? I'm thinking of stopping it here and doing this inside bit in Jit Rock because it's going to be quite dark. The Super K's are heading off site this morning, so they've brought in four carpenters to get the job done. I've got four carpenters there today, so I just needed that to try and compensate me not being there, really. <laughs> um, not that I'm saying I'm worth four carpenters. <laughs> that came out wrong. It's OK, Carl. We know you're good. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elisa and Lissandra are planning what many consider the most important part of any living area, the entertainment unit. So are there really only four appliances? The TV, the Sonos, the Blu-ray? And... No. The TV, the HD. Yeah, but is that the Blu-ray? That's It's all in one. That's what I'm saying. I just said that. And I said yes. You said no. I said Lee. yes. You actually said no. I said yes. No, you actually I said, said no. yes. What did Jono, what did I say? She actually said no. No. I walked along and I said, yeah, it's only one. <laughs> so are there really only four appliances? The TV, the Sonos, the Blu-ray? No. Obviously we weren't listening. And the day started off so well. So there you go. Meanwhile, like the proverbial dog with a bone he won't drop, Steve has been pondering, you guessed it, the flu. And he's about to drop a bombshell. So, the situation exists that the plans are wrong. Well, at least the estimation from... Keith may have interpreted the plans in a different way than Correct. should be interpreted. So, all oh, right. <laughs> Steve has bought a gas heater that only comes with a vertical flu. Trouble is, it can't be modified to come out at the point on the roof Keith has specified. The gas pressure is probably not going to be enough to sustain a gas heater running the length of three storeys. Wow. It's too far, especially if we go off on an angle. So we need to keep it as straight as possible in order to get that. Good luck telling the big man he's got his plans wrong, Steve. We can't put our flu currently through where you've got it on the plans. Why? Because it won't bend? That's right. So you need to get another heater. Well, if your plans aren't specific enough to... As I said to you the other day, right, the hole in the slab is you've got to stick to that location. Where you put your heater, it's up to you. And the way you flew it, that's up to you. To go in one straight line, that's just, that means you need another heater. No, it's not that simple. If the plans change once... The plans can... haven't changed. The location where you're going up through the rooftop slab... Oh, tell me less today, Keith. Tell me less today, because this this has been going back and forth. So... You I have understand. said all along, right, the only thing I want from you is for the flu to come out in that location of the slab. 
You've got to get another heater. It's as simple as that. That's... It's conjecture here. Have fun. Knock yourself out. <laughs> okay. He just walked away. That's nice. Tomorrow night... Raise me up. The twins are on song. I stand on mountain. Steve's flu is too long. I think flu season's just begun because this is going to get more interesting, I think. <laughs> Carl tries it on. Do you come here often? Uh -huh. I've heard you're a big spender in these parts. I'm going to go now. Beautiful lady. Your waterproofer has sent me an email. And the boys have gone wrong. Which means we can't actually sell your apartment.